And we're gonna be going on with the second year mark of me being on oral finasteride. What are the things that changed uh, between the year number one and right now? How about the side effects? Did I get any new side effects? Do I still have the one side effects that I had by the one year mark? You will find out in this video. Also, you'll find out how are the results? Did something improve in terms of my hair thickness, hair density, hair loss stabilization? And uh, with that being said, let's start with the video, guys. Make sure you smash that like button if you are enjoying these regular hair loss and hair transplant related updates coming from me on this channel. And as always, this video has been brought to you by GoFiber, which are hair building fibers you can use to mask any thinning or patchy areas on your scalp to make your hair look thicker and better. So make sure you check out the link in the video description below where you can visit GoFiber, get a free sample of your choice from them and try them out. See if you like them. Hey, this is Matt. Welcome back to the channel. Glad you tuned in and good to see you everybody. If you are new and you are somebody who wants to reverse your hair loss, you want to maintain and catch your hair loss early on so you can thicken your hair as much as possible and then if it's still not even enough for you because you have higher expectations then you can still get your hairline to the next level with a hair transplant so if you want to get your hair back the proper way you want to do a well-informed decision before you do that make sure you get educated for free on my website mattdominance.com by getting my free ebook plus get into our facebook group uh, hair transplant experiences on Facebook with almost 4,000 guys. This is, these are two must-have things that you need to do if you want to get a great result with your hair transplant. Now let's come back to the video which is gonna be uh, consisting of three parts. Part number one, I'm gonna be sharing with you how I take, how I dose finasteride, how I've been doing it for the last two years. Number two, side effects. Number three, my results before and after between number one year and year number two. Let's start with the dosing right now. Uh, we want to minimize the side effects, the potential side effects of finasteride. Even doctors will probably suggest it to you who know something about microdosing that you can also take less than one milligram and still get good benefits. So that's what I'm doing. That's what I've been doing for the last two years. <clears throat> the way I microdose may be called, uh, may be considered weird or odd, maybe crazy, uh, but that's how I have been doing it for the last two years. I have been using the five milligram Proscar tablet. Uh, that, that is five times finasteride than you what you find in Propecia tablets. Uh, this is uh, for treating benign prostatic hyperplasia. FDA approved for this. You can get it without prescription in countries like Turkey. That's where I get it. And uh, it's completely illegal. You can get it in a pharmacy. <clears throat> you can cut it then in uh, four pieces and you get 1.25 milligram of uh, like finasteride. So it's almost like the one milligram. Not a big difference. However, if you want to further microdose it, it's hard <clears throat> if you have a pill cutter even because then these little, uh, you know, quarters can uh, like uh, split and, uh, you know, it's not a good thing to keep cutting them further onto like eight parts or so. I tried. That's when I came with the pill crusher. I'm crushing the pill simply. One pill will be crushed every week and I weigh that powder every single day <clears throat> and I come onto an equivalent of 0.5 to 0.6 milligram of finasteride that way. Now, is the substance equally, is the finasteride substance equally distributed in that pill? It should be. I hope so. If not, I was doing it all wrong, but if I did, you know, if it wouldn't be equally distributed, that means I would have uh, had way more severe side effects over the last two years, which I didn't have. That means, uh, you know, I was getting a steady dose uh, by crushing that and weighing that uh, portion of that powder every day uh, instead of getting some super high dose. So that's what I've been doing, how I'm doing it to minimize the uh, exposure to the side effects. And I'm getting decent level of hair loss stabilization. You will see in the before and after results. So that's what I do. Some guys just cut the five milligram Proscar pill into four pieces and they get 1.25 milligram a day. That's fine. Or every other day, that's fine. Some guys just take Propecia one milligram. They take it every day. Some guys split that Propecia one milligram pill into two pieces. They take uh, 0.5 milligram every day. You can do it as you want, but be aware if you get one milligram Propecia, you need prescription almost in every country in the world, okay? Only the five milligram Proscar, you don't need prescription for it if you are in Turkey. You can just buy it in a pharmacy without prescription. So that was on the point of dosing. Uh, sometimes I don't, like sometimes I forget to take it every day because I forget, I travel, stuff like that. 
completely fine. Nothing's going to happen to your hair, in my opinion, uh, if you skip a couple of days, especially if you have been already using it for many, many months and years. All right, guys, now let's talk about the side effects of Finasteride or Propecia, the brand name Propecia. This is the RX list, which kind of is listing all kinds of drugs and lists their studies, efficacy, side effect profile, and uh, all you need to know as a consumer, but it's also good for the doctor if he's not sure uh, what drug to recommend to patient. And if he doesn't remember all the side effects, this is the website that serves him as a guideline. Now here are the side effects which have been linked to finasteride use. Since this is like my report, I just wanna share with you what types of side effects from these ones I got. So let's start with impotence. Um, I cannot tell, I didn't do my sperm test, like uh, sperm count, uh, sperm morphology, sperm motility. Uh, so I cannot tell you whether, you know, um, I'm suffering from impotence, I hope not. I will get a test next year, but if I would be somebody who's interested in having a child, I would get my sperm count, sperm motility, sperm mo morphology, semen volume and stuff like that. And then I would, you know, look at these values, consult it with my doctor and ask him if he recommends me finasteride because uh, it has been shown that men, especially who are oligospermic, men with very low, severely low sperm counts, low sperm motility, sperm morphology values, they should not be advised to take finasteride because especially the, the impotent side effect has been linked to these men who are to begin with oligospermic. So just uh, bear that in mind. Then definitely take this test before considering finasteride. Another side effect, loss of interest in sex. I didn't notice uh, trouble having an air orgasm. No, not at all. Abnormal ejaculation. Now, abnormal ejaculation could be also maybe too much or too little. Too little, I can confirm. This is the one side effect that I already reported in my last year update on finasteride. Yes, I can confirm that uh, the ejaculation volume is less since I'm on finasteride. But I also need to confirm that it's still different like when I'm like jerking off and watching porn, the ejaculation is way less than when I'm having like passionate romance, passionate sex with a really hot girl that I find attractive. It's way more. You know it guys, okay? No matter if you're on finasteride or not, like natural intercourse induced orgasm is gonna be always more than like porn. Swelling on, in your hands or feet, no. Swelling or tenderness in your breasts, no. Dizziness, no. Weakness, no. Uh, weakness, many guys uh, ask me about my gym performance and stuff, I made a video on it. I will link it here. No hindered ability to build muscle uh, or burn fat, no. Uh, cannot confirm, no weakness whatsoever. Uh, pain in my balls, it's not actually listed here, but some guys get pain in their balls. It's very short-term type of side effect. It usually occurs during the first couple weeks when you're on finasteride or first couple days, then it goes away. I had it as well when I started, by the way. It vanished after two, three weeks. Feeling like you might pass out, no. Feeling like you might pass out. I didn't have it, uh, headache. No, but I need to mention that when I was using topical finasteride, before I even started oral finasteride two years ago, I had been on a topical finasteride liposomal gel uh, for six months and I was feeling headache after applying the topical. The same headache, the same type of headache I'm feeling when I'm applying topical dutasteride. That's another topic. I need to touch on that uh, topical dutasteride, guys. Sorry for that. Uh, I was not very consistent with topical dutasteride this year. That's why I was not doing many updates because I also uh, was waiting for a supplier to supply me topical dutasteride, but since I was traveling so much this year, I never got that supply and then um, uh, it expired. So I couldn't, re I couldn't use it. Big issue. Again, <laughs> sorry for that. I uh, wasn't very consistent with topical dutasteride, and, uh, but I started again two months ago. Uh, so I'm going to come back to it. I actually got headache when I was using the uh, liposomal topical finasteride. So that's actually when I got headaches, but not with oral finasteride or oral propitia. Runny nose, no. Skin rash, no. But also skin 
irritation you can get if you are using topical finasteride. You are more likely to get some type of skin irritation, so be aware of that, especially if you are ordering uh, topical finasteride, God knows from, from where, okay? So be aware of that and always test it maybe with a, on a small area of your scalp, and if you don't get any irritation, you wait at least uh, one or two days, and if you have, usually you, you don't get side effects from the first application of topical finasteride, but from the second or third. So wait a couple days, Apply it once, two, three times, and if you don't get side, uh, um, skin irritation or, or something like that, then you can apply it on your whole scalp. That's just a little advice. Uh, yeah, there is... <clears throat> so, I, I, I'm also missing erectile dysfunction in a, on this list because actually erectile dysfunction is something that guys are also... Um, complaining about and erectile dysfunction usually happens uh, like I think there are guys who are more predisposed more prone to have erectile dysfunction after starting finasteride I didn't have it fortunately uh, I think it has something to do with your serum testosterone levels serum estrogen levels SHBG the way your uh, uh, testosterone is uh, converting into DHT or aromatizing into estrogen and also it depends on your lifestyle on your overall fitness level and health based on all these factors I just mentioned some guys are more likely to have ED on finasteride than other guys I don't have any erectile dysfunction by the way so uh, these were pretty much all the side effects uh, one more psychological side effects something like um, anxiety depression depressive symptoms i'm also missing them here because these are also side effects that i was also touching on to in my uh, one year update on finasteride why anxiety as a side effect of finasteride why it's possible because as a result of progesterone not being 5 alpha reduced into 5 alpha, 5 alpha dihydro uh, progesterone because that's not the only thing that finasteride inhibits it's not just inhibiting the dh testosterone into dht conversion but also progesterone into 5 alpha dihydroprogesterone conversion. So as a result of that inhibition, you're not getting as much allopregnanolone. Allopregnanolone, it's hormone of well-being and it's being also used for treating uh, postpartum depression in women, for example. And uh, this uh, allopregnanolone will be created as a result of that metabolite of 5-alpha uh, reduced metabolite, metabolite of progesterone you know there is another 3-alpha hydroxysteroid dehydrogenase which is then converting it into allopregnanolone but now that your testosterone is not being converted into DHT 100% as usual but maybe 70% or 60% less uh, with while you are on finasteride some guys can feel it you know on their mood you know that's what i try to say if you have been experiencing depressive symptoms on a finasteride then you should just discontinue finasteride for a couple of weeks and see if it's going to be shown in more elevated uh you know more you being happy more less anxious and whatnot so try it uh, can you lose like more hair? Not really. Like if you have been using finasteride for many months, if you take two, three weeks off, nothing's going to really happen to your hair. So try it and see if it was the case. If yes, then you can come back with a lower dose or do it less frequently. When you take finasteride, the biggest improvement should be always expected in the first year that has been shown in studies. Like for example, in this study right here, where they observed about 12% increase in the year number one and additional increase of 3.5 percent of uh, target area hair count uh, improvement in the second year this is me in october 2021 so one year after on the right and on the left you can see the situation uh, uh, last year after one year on finasteride so these are all the photos this is after me washing my hair um, and you can see that um, yeah it's pretty much uh, yeah, about the same uh, hair thickness, uh, about the same coverage, about the same type of diffuse hair loss. It's pretty much just slowing it down. So as you can see, it looks about the same, to be honest, compared to the hair condition last year. So I'm not seeing any drastic improvements, but neither I'm seeing any like uh, drastic uh, 
hair shedding or you know hair loss progression which is great and that's something that I was hoping this was my expectation always that when I get on finasteride it's gonna pretty much stabilize my hair loss I wasn't hoping for any drastic crazy thickening because already I got that thickening in the first year if you take a look at my before before situation before I started even with the finasteride and the first year it was already a really nice improvement okay I knew that the year number two and uh, three and four is just going to maintain that and I'm going to be happy with that so this is my expectation all right guys that was it for this video thank you so much for watching thanks for the support thanks for the 50,000 subscribers once again thank you so much everybody for supporting my channel for all you guys who are already considering hair transplant make sure you do two things get a free education on my website mattdominance.com and then join simultaneously join the Facebook group hair transplant experiences with almost 4,000 members in the group if you want to make a well-informed decision if you want to maximize the success of your hair transplant so make sure you check out the link mattdominance.com slash mentoring where you can also get on a one-on-one -on -one call with me happy to help you guys thank you very much for watching and see you in another video take care